Hello, everyone, and welcome to MACV Answers. I'm Stephanie Olkers, and today we're going to be talking about how you can avoid falling victim to cyber scams. Today, I'm going to be joined by Abhishek Karnik, our Director of Threat Research. He's been with MACV for 15 years and is one of our leading experts in this area. Hi, Abhishek. Thank you for joining us. All right, thank you, Stephanie. And uh, to my, my topic for today is going to be avoid falling victim to scams. Uh, why is this such an important topic? We hear a lot about cybersecurity and attacks on organizations, but what you don't hear about is the many, many scams out there which have a you know, higher volume of impact to consumers. And so today's session is going to be talking more about these scams and, and essentially education. So um, in the 1990s, there was a very prolific hacker called Kevin Mitnick. Um, you know, he was arrested. He was known for a lot of crimes and eventually arrested, pled guilty. Uh, you know, and uh, what he ended up doing eventually in life was start a, a consulting service which talks about security. So he put his knowledge to good use at the end of it. But he wrote a book called The Art of Deception. And the key uh, in that book was where he spoke about social engineering. So he, he didn't go around, uh, you know, writing complicated code like you see in Hollywood films, for example, you know, where you're trying to crack a password. What he implemented is something called social engineering, which is basically the art of manipulating people to perform actions or divulging confidential inf information. And this is what's got, what is the foundation for scams, right? Um, the, the IC3 or the Internet Crime uh, Control Center, which is a division of the FBI, uh, had this report where they showed the, the amount of losses that we have suffered over the years as a result of scams, right? And it's alarming, it's growing. Uh, so you can see that in 2021 alone, we were at uh, 7 billion. And the, the way that this report works is that people call in the report different frauds, different scams. So what they do is they break it down based on age. And you can tell that there are different segments here, different age groups who probably fall victim to different types of scams, right? So uh, at the at the base of it, you know, these scams are like a cancer. They, they spread, they've been spreading over the years, you know, and they thrive on human sentiment, on, on sentiments of anxiety, of concern, uh, you know, of excitement, you know, of greed sometimes. So human behavior is a very, very important part of these scams. And so I create a little word art, you know, there's a, there's many scams out there, right? And, uh, you know, but I want to talk about uh, a few very prevalent scams, so phishing, donation scams, romance scams, non-delivery. These are few scams I'll try to cover today, uh, which essentially are the essence of my talk and what you potentially will run into while you are connected on the internet. So the first question is, where do these scams originate? Where do they come from? So, you know, they might come from many, many sources and the most common sources end up being, you know, text messages on your mobile phone, right? The example on the left shows you something which is scamming you to believe that you have an issue with your USPS tracking. On the right hand side, you'll see email spam. So it might be a very believable looking email. This email does look like it's coming from Chase, but it's a scam. So I'll talk through, you know, how we can identify such scams. Um, and then finally, you also, you may run into a scam. Like if, if it's not pushed to you via your text message or your email, you might actually end up finding one on the internet because you go to Google, you're looking for, uh, you know, deals, you're looking for current affairs and somewhere in that mix, somebody slides in, you know, what is a scam. So when we, as we get into it, the first scam I want to, uh, you know, explain to you is banking. And what I'm going to try to do here is try to explain with some examples. So they say a picture is worth, worth a thousand words. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say that videos probably are worth a thousand pictures. So I've tried to get some videos together for you. So this first video is a video on Chase banking. Uh, this example that I put here derives from the last email that you saw. Uh, essentially, when you click on that Chase email, it takes you to this fake website. So if you if you look on the page right now, you have the a fake URL here. So this URL is a fake. This is the one that derived from the email. Um, and if you click on the second website, which is this one, it's, it looks exactly the same, but you can tell that this is from chase.com. So this is the legit website. The hackers here uh, have also 
taken a lot of effort to create a certificate, you know, which means that their communication is encrypted, even though your data ends up at the, with the bad guys, right? So here's an example. You can see it's issued to the incorrect domain, so it's definitely not Chase. But another feature here is that the validity of the certificate is only three months. You know, Chase and big companies would typically issue certificates or buy certificates which last a lot longer. When you have links at the bottom, if you click on these links, Typically, a legit website would take you and show you some information which is valid. So in this case, terms of use. If we do the same on the phishing website, these links typically don't work. You know, so the attacker has taken the time and effort to remove all what would be, uh, you know, distractions for you and try to get you to focus on what they want from you, which is your username password. So when you enter the username password here, you'll see that you know, it takes you to the next page, which tries to get more information out from you. So he tries to get you to enter your email address uh, and your password. You know, so that's the first step. You just logged in. So you probably don't need to provide any of that information again, but uh, you know, they're hoping that this is a good way to verify your information. Okay, so once you click it, it gets more information out of you, right? So it asks you for your credit card number and your expiry date. Well. You know, typically if you call Chase, they'll ask you for a verification code or they'll send you a text message or do some sort of, you know, two factor authentication. In this case, they're going directly to what they want, which is all the information that is required from them to steal your identity and to steal your banking information. Right? So if, if in this case, like, of course, this is all fake information, but we, when we hit next, it, it basically takes you to the original page. They've, extracted all your information, but they redirected you back to the original Chase website. Now, what's important to note here is that this is also a great way to test a fake website, right? So if you end up clicking a link and getting to one of these websites, you know, you you can you should look for indicators, of course, like the the you know the certificate I showed you, but uh, you can also try to enter some fake information, and in many cases, they just take it. They don't. They don't really care. They have no way of validating it, so they accept it, nonetheless. Right now, if I did the same on an original Chase website, uh, what you would see is that when you enter the username, you know, and we'll use the same username as we did, which is a fake again, uh, and we enter the password for that and try to sign in, it just stops. It tells you that, hey, I've not been able to validate the information and you obviously have uh, incorrectly provided the information, go back and check. So this demonstration was essentially just a way to show you that if somebody is really trying to get more information out of you, you know, you need to stop and think about it because it might be a scam. Okay, so this slide, you know, derives from what I just uh, showed you in a video, we said, which is, how do you identify this early on? Because you know this, uh, this website of the phishing attempt came from an email. So if you really drive into that email, you'll see that you know the from comes from chasebanking.com. And if you're a Chase customer and you do some Googling, you realize that there is no chasebanking.com, it's chase.com. You know, so they have obviously very well uh, taken the effort to register a domain potentially, social engineer the email, but there isn't a chasebanking.com. But even then, if you look into the email and you try to understand the language, you realize there's a lot of discrepancies in the English language. It's it's got you know too many upper cases. It's got all kinds of grammatical and uh, you know errors, uh, in, in even spelling mistakes. You know, and that's probably a good giveaway. And and again, this is just one indicator. There might be uh, you know some scams which are really good at taking care of all this. So obviously, in this case, they haven't. On the right side. Again, the URL that you went to was not related to Chase. Obviously, it's got a, a URL which looks like it's in Russia. Uh, and the next one, uh, you know, is the certificate. So I spoke about TLS and I spoke about SSH. These are basically just protocols on the internet which help you encrypt. So whenever you contact a server, you know, when, if it says HTTPS, it basically means that the this, the connection is encrypted between the server and uh, the client, right? And so TLS and SSL are basically uh, just encryption protocols. And like I said, even though he took care of 
that specific detail. That means he did create an HTTPS website. What he didn't do or what is an indicator here is that the certificate is only valid for three months, which is typically not the case with a big organization such as Chase, Chase Banking. Um, and then, of course, the links. If you remember the links, when you click through them, they did not take you anywhere on the phishing page. So that's a, another giveaway that they're trying to focus your efforts in stealing the information. OK, so with that, let me move on to the next section, which is non delivery scams. Non delivery scams are scams where you know you order something on the Internet and it never gets delivered. Uh, and this is a very common scam. I have family members who have been impacted by this. So either they don't get it or they get something which is drastically different. So, you know, a good way to gain attention, you know, is is to excite the customer to show them a big 95 percent off. Right. Or, uh, you know, show them a website which has unbelievable deals. Right. And so you'll find a lot of these on Shopify, Amazon, you know, and they're very prolific during holiday seasons because that's when people are shopping online. So in this example, you know, this is basically somebody trying to send really good cycles. The first one apparently is an electric e-bike where they slash the prices from 481 to just $43, right? So it's it's ridiculously low priced. It's it's probably not even practical to sell a bike of that sort for that price. So when you see something like that, you know, just take a second and think about it. You know, try to understand whether this is too good to be true. And if it, if it is, it's it probably is too good to be true, so you have to be cautious there. OK, the next uh, example I have is donation scams. So, you know, as you know, as we look at another human sentiment is basically, you know, emotion or concern, right? And so these have been very prevalent recently because of all the, the news and uh, around Ukraine. Uh, and so scammers have obviously taken advantage of the conflict and there have been a lot of websites that have been popping up for donations. In fact, in some cases, Ukraine donations were being requested in cryptocurrency. And so the scammers thought of that to be a great opportunity to utilize such a scam. So what I have here is an example of one such scam where they are requesting a donation in crypto, right? And this is this is again, you may have got this over email. Uh, you might have gone searching for ways to help Ukraine and run into the scam. So I'm going to play this video and you'll see that. So this website, they show you the different conversions for the different cryptocurrencies. You can obviously go and purchase them and then it shows you this wallet where they request you to submit. So what's interesting here is that this wallet, uh, of course, is the attacker wallet, but they expect you to go make the payment and then come and validate if you your do donation has gone through. So what we're doing here is we're just going to pick the wallet. We take this specific. Uh, you know, wallet address and just modify it here and put it back in here and see what happens. So there we go. We modified it and when we hit check, obviously against a fake wallet, they don't have any way of validating that. They just say yes, thank you for your donation and the donation is accepted. Uh, another thing I don't know if you caught at the at the top was the fact that the counter was running the wrong way around. So obviously they didn't think about it too much. Uh, they've made some mistakes here. Uh, but again, what they try to do is they try to fake transactions, right? To make it more believable, they have these these sections where they show scrolling windows of transactions going through, which make you believe that there's a lot of people donating and therefore this is a legit website. Right, so this is just another example. In fact, they even have a chat window. And if you understand how to look at the source code, you can right click and go to view source code and you scroll down to the parts of, you know, this source code page, you'll see a lot of dummy messages in there. And these dummy messages are basically what's showing up on the chat window. So you look at that, you know, these are all fake messages which are just scrolling through in a chat window. So if you take some time and really think about such a web page, you will very soon realize that this potentially is a fake website. OK, so I hope that is helpful. Um, these two videos. Let me move to the next topic that we have tech support scams. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I've been I've been getting a ton of phone calls about this, you know, claiming to be the IRS, 
you know, tax season, you know, so the opportunity cost is, you know, that you, you probably have to be at the right place at the right time sometime to be get scammed. And they are very good about ensuring that the conditions are absolutely right and the theme for their scams is absolutely right. In this example, I've taken something called the McAfee activation scam. And the reason I do that is because this itself is very, very uh, prevalent out there. Uh, and, and what they do is, you know, either you get an email or you get snail mail, which is very surprising. You still get scams over snail mail, you know, or telephone calls saying that your activation has expired and we have auto renewed. And what that tends to do is it creates panic. It creates concern. You know, in some cases it creates anger. And that is exactly the emotion that they're looking for because they want you to react to that. So like what, uh, what, what the right thing to do in such a scenario would be to take a step back, probably Google for McAfee, make sure you're calling the right phone number. But in this case, what, are pe what people end up doing is they believe that email, they pick up the phone number, they make the call, and you are directly in contact with the scammers now who will then try to get more information out of you, right? And so how do we prevent such scams, right? Like you, if you have received such an email, uh, one of the things that you should look for, again, is the language. You can see McAfee is incorrectly spelled. There's other grammatical errors, but you can also pick up the phone call, uh, sorry, the phone number and Google it. So in this case, uh, you'll see that this phone number has already been associated with fraud, uh, you know, by the FBI, by a lot of other websites. Uh, and these results in some cases are from 2020. And the email was in 2021, which goes to show that they have been reusing these phone numbers. So with that, let me move to the next section, which is W crypto. So there's a saying, right? There's no free lunch, right? And, <laughs> but, but, as humans, you know, you you do have an element of greed sometimes. Like you 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 want to make you want to make money. You know, you want to invest, right? And so, because crypto has been such a hot topic, um, you know, the the scammers obviously try to entice you into getting your money. And one way they do that is by putting up a fake website and saying that, hey, we're gonna we're gonna help you double your money. You send us money, we'll double your money and send it back, right? And <laughs> people actually fall victim to such scams. So we found one scam which made over a $2 million in a day. You know, if you look at their crypto wallet, they have been racking up money and that is concerning because that's money out of, you know, our, our wallet, you know, that's money out of our wallets, essentially uh, those of our friends and family potentially. So here's an example of one such scam. Uh, you might run into the scam by just, looking for information on Google, you know, education videos on cryptocurrency or whatever. So if you go into Google today and you search, uh, you put some search terms in and you go for live feeds, you'll probably find this scam is still active. So in this case, we're going to take an example here of one such scam. Um, so one, you know, celebrity who has been talking a lot about crypto in the past has been Elon Musk, right? And so they obviously are utilizing him uh, you know, as a way to anchor their scam around. And so in this case, what they do is they've taken up a legit video from Elon Musk and they wrapped it around a frame, you know, with a fake website. You know, so if you listen to this video, you'll hear them talking about crypto and then they make you believe that, oh, well, you know, if if you believe Elon Musk, you know, then you have an opportunity to, lay, to make a lot of money. So let's take this website, we open it up. And if you go here, you'll see that this website does take you to a page which is requesting uh, your investment on crypto, right? So, so there you go. And of course, you know the theme has been well thought through. They've 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 come up with uh, uh, you know a well engineered page here, uh, and they've provided you wallets where you can go and donate money. And again, at the bottom of this, you'll see that they have. They're giving you examples of money transfers. So, you know, if you transferred from two, uh, sorry, from two 22, um, you know, coins, you got back 45, right? So they again, they fake it, but they make it, right? They try to make it more believable. And there are people who fall victim to this, uh, you know, hoping to make a quick buck. So again, keep in mind, there's no free lunch. You know, nobody's going to give you free crypto. Uh, and if they do, uh, you know, well, just be aware because it may not be true. So hopefully these examples have been helpful and 
the obvious next question is that with all the volume of information that is out there, how do I prevent myself, uh, you know, against these scams? And and prevention is better than cure. Like if you can take some time and think about the situation, you might be able to defeat most of these scams because you can be alert. You can be you. I mean, if you understand your uh, investment philosophy, your banking well enough, you might not even fall victim to such scams, right? So. Um, the good news is that there are tools that can help you, like our own McAfee, Total Protection and Web Advisor. You know, they have credit monitoring. They have uh, different types of heuristics which prevent you from, you know, typo squatting, which is essentially, you know, typing in an incorrect name for Bank of America, which then prevents you to go from to Bank of America, but takes you to another website. You know, so, so things like that, plus with, uh, you know, all the intelligence that we have in our back, we protect both the endpoint uh, you know, and the mobile. So that should definitely be your first step. We also have other features such as the protection score, you know, where you can apply them to multiple devices and they just give you a feel of how you're doing. What's your security posture? Are you doing well? It makes recommendations on how to improve, uh, you know, your safety and, and reduce the risk of you being a part of a breach, for instance, right? Um, so then coming to the final piece of this talk is like, how should I stay alert? You know, like what should I do to prevent getting scammed? And I would say you should ask a lot of questions. So take a take a pause. You know, when you see something, don't react. You know, take some time, respond slowly, think about it, breathe, act, ask a lot of questions. Is the sender attempting to instill a sense of urgency? Right? If he is, you know, he might be trying to scam you. Right? Uh, do I have an account with this bank? Like I've seen people, you know, who are more curious than anything who click on you know, chase.com when they don't even have a Chase account. So in some cases, you're really asking for it and, and you don't want to go down that path. You know, just try to be safe and when in doubt, you know, don't click or don't pick up an unexpected phone call. Let them leave you a voicemail so you get some time to think about it and, and process that information. And if you are a victim of a scam, you know, there are things you can do. So many times you realize later that you were a victim of a scam and if you were, you know, you should get in touch with your bank, you know, give them a call, tell them what happened. They'll probably put your account on hold. They might even issue you a chargeback. You know, if you get scammed through Amazon, because there's a lot of scams out there too, you know, contact them directly. You know, they might be able to prevent the money from being wired. They might be able to prevent uh, you from getting, you know, losing your money essentially. Uh, and then there are, you know, it's a community effort, right? So you can all, always call up the Better Business Bureau, you know, or the IC3 and complain about it so somebody else can benefit from not falling victim to such scams. You know, so there's just some information that I've tried to share here um, and primarily in the US and the UK, but I'm sure if you do a little uh, Googling, you might find, uh, you know, the right uh, areas in your country where such um, scams are being monitored and reported. So in summary, you know, I just want to say that scams are usually socially engineered. You know, there's a lot of your information out there. You know, it's easy to join the dots and give you a call, which can lead to them duping you. So be careful. Uh, the IC3 once again had 7 billion. That's a lot of money, just lost the scams. And that's probably just what's reported. It's likely more than that. You know, if you are online, if you have kids online, you, you are very likely to run into a scam. So, you know, I think education is the key. It's very important. Not everything can be automated. You have to take some time to explain the pros and cons of you know, being on the internet and what you can potentially run into and how to react or respond in such situations. Um, you know, and then of course, try to maintain a good cyber hygiene, you know, use a good password manager, you know, try to use the right tools that can help you get uh, to, to fall victim to a scam. You know, and if you are a victim, then you should know what to do to prevent further damage uh, because time is of the essence. A stitch in time saves nine, so you should be better prepared. So with that, I will hand over uh, to you guys and, and see if there are any questions and answers. Thank you so much, Abhishek, for walking us through that presentation. The information you provided was so useful, and I, I felt a little bit overwhelmed with all the ways that people can try to scam us and take advantage of us. It really is kind of terrifying, but you also provided us with tools and resources to help us to prevent those things. Uh, we do have some questions, and if you don't mind, I'd like to jump right in. 
Um, so first, I know you covered this, but this is just a really big deal. We see a lot of people calling into McAfee and asking about scam emails. Um, how can we tell if an email is real or not? And can you just go over again, just one more time, what are the things people can do to not get tricked? Okay, that's a really good question, Stephanie. Um, you know, so emails are one of the primary ways these scams typically start. So you you should take some time to look at who that email is coming from, right? In if it's unknown, like you would typically you know people you are constantly connected with. But if you see something coming from a banking institution, you probably want to check the email address. You might even want to check, you know, the at the domain of that to make sure that that is actually a legit company. Uh, if you see hyperlinks, you know, try to mouse over them before you click them. Just try to mouse over them because it shows you where that link is going to lead to. And typically those are good indicators of it may say it's going to chase.com, but end up on some random website. Um, you know, and again, language. Uh, a lot of these people who are scamming you are probably not US or UK based, right? And so their primary language may not be English. And so you will see that in the language, sometimes it stands out very clearly that this email was put up, made up in a hurry and it's got all kinds of grammatical uh, errors in it. So, you know, it's just about taking some time to read through that email, especially when it's got to do with banking or making payments. Uh, and if, of course, if it's instilling a sense of urgency, that's another indicator uh, that you should be cautious on such emails for. So basically we need to fight against all our human instincts when it comes to scams of any sort. No urgency, don't trust. We, we need to just fight or flight kind of thing. Um, I, I also do want to reiterate that here at McAfee, we are here to help you. And if you ever have a doubt, especially when it comes to emails from people who are saying they're McAfee, you can always find help at www.mcafee.com slash support. We have useful knowledge articles, we have chat, and we have phone support available to you. So don't hesitate to reach out if you need help. We're here for you. The next question that I think is really important to cover because we will all do it at some point is what do we do if we do something we shouldn't have? We click on something we shouldn't have, we go to a page we shouldn't have, we fall for a scam we shouldn't have. What advice would you give? So yeah, if you happen to click on a link that you believe you shouldn't have, you know, the, the good news is that in many of these phishing scams, it's it's a step-by-step -step process. So you know, as long as you haven't given your information away, you might be okay. You know, unless you run into like some crazy exploit, most social engineer scams are not that advanced. Um, however, if you do fall victim to a scam where you do give your information and you realize later that you've been duped, you know, you should call either the bank directly, you know, or the service such as Amazon to report against a scam such as that so that they can help you because a lot of these organizations, you know, they do have, uh, you know, they put a block or they have delays in charging your credit card, you know, or even report that information up uh, to the to the to the bureau. And and lastly, you can always report something like that to the Better Business Bureau or to the FBI. Uh, they have centers and code phone numbers, which I have shared, uh, which can help you get there and, and make larger complaint. Thank you so much for that, Abhishek. Um, so another question we have is, and, and I, I'm really struggling with this, is that our desire to help out with charitable actions and, and organizations, but our desire to not be duped and scammed, how can we tell if a charitable donations site is legit? So yes, uh, for donations, uh, you know, you have to, like, remember that if information is being pushed to you, if you're being requested to make a donation over email or over text, those are, you know, those are suspicious, right? Like take your time, don't necessarily click on them. Because if you really want to make a donation, you should take the time to research the different organizations, you know, and make sure that you're going to the right website. So if it's for, if it's for Ukraine, for example, you know, make sure that you end up at, a, you know, a donation for Ukraine, which is a legit website. You know, it's, it's associated with Ukraine, uh, as as a company, as a country, or through the Red Cross, or through other more uh, you know organizations which are very well established. So it's important that you you understand you're able to sieve out 
what is an established organization versus what is not, you know, and go to, you know, a, a government website in the worst case to make a donation rather than a link which has been pushed at you. That is some great advice, and I, I'm glad we can provide some information to people so we could still do those some good things and provide the resources to people who need it. Um, so our, our last question, and I was thinking about this uh, as we were preparing for this webinar, you know, I have teenagers who I worry about and what they do on the internet and they have cell phones now and being targeted. And as well as when you were giving the presentation, the age groups that you presented, I have aging parents and and they are at a higher risk of being targeted for these things. How how do I keep my family members safe from scams? How, how do I, because I know this what you've taught me now and how I can maybe prevent and be less of a target, but how do I prevent my children, my parents, the rest of my family from being victims? Okay, so there's never a good answer for that. Although uh, I think this is the same problem I run in with every day because I have kids too. Education is a very important piece of it, right? Ensuring that they understand cyber hygiene from day one, not just for scams, but even for privacy reasons is very important. You know, what information they put out there, you know, is equally important because that could lead to a scam. You know, don't put your email addresses in different websites because you might end up getting spam, right? So be cautious and give them some time. Like, I think that probably this video is a great way to show you know, give them examples of what is fake and what is not, because these kids are really smart. I mean, they get on, they catch on really fast. On the other side of the spectrum, you have your elderly parents, like my parents were not very comfortable with, you know, devices and technology, you know, and so, uh, you know, and they, they are very gullible sometimes to getting scammed. So again, like, you know, taking some time to walk them through bookmark which websites they should be going to, which banking they should be going to, is a great way to lead them in the right direction. Educate them on not to click on things, you know, not to get onto websites where people are trying to build relationships. Um, I mean, it's fine to do that, you know, but just be cautious because like if somebody starts asking for private information, you know, your account number, trying to make you, trying to get you to make a donation, those are red flags. Like, you know, it's, it's something to think about. Don't rush into it get advice from your kids or get advice from other people in your family to make sure that you're not heading down the wrong wrong path. That almost sounds like that could be an entirely other webinar on its own. So it sounds like we need to have you back to do another session for us. So thank you so much for joining us today, Abhishek. This has been so useful and valuable to myself and I'm sure the rest of our audience. Thank you again. Thank you everyone for joining us. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us at www.macfee.com support. If you have any issues with your products or if you just have any fears or questions about whether or not you're being scammed. Thank you so much. Have a great day.